Hello, my name is Louise Ellis and I'm a water engineer with Arup and the Resilient Shift. I'm here this week in Stockholm at World Water Week. Today I'm talking to Amanda Janot, who's an alternative economic policy advisor for governments and the UN. We're going to be talking about resilience in the context of the economy and economic policy. Hi Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I just have a couple of questions for you. So firstly, what are the biggest resilience challenges you're facing um, in your role currently? Mm -hmm. um, so I mostly work with governments on economic policy design and assessment, and I would say most governments that I work with, um, it's all about diversification. So for the past, I would say 20 or 30 years, it was all about comparative advantage, and you were supposed to specialize in your comparative advantage. But the thing is that for a lot of these countries, their comparative advantage might be that they produce copper. And so then all they end up doing is producing copper and importing everything else. And then as soon as the price fluctuates for copper, then their entire economy is left in ruin. So, and even beyond sort of the, the resiliency and the importance of building resiliency through diversification, there's also a recognition that it's led to a, a structure where there's fairly few linkages in an economy. If you don't have multiple types of activities, huge levels of import dependency from rich countries for you know, more expensive uh, manufactured goods and and it results in very poor like job creation, yeah, environmental management, things like this. So all in all, it sort of relates to resiliency, I think. And, and how are you responding to that um, in that alternative economic policy that you're advising on? Sure. I mean, that this tends to be sort of the area that I get called in a lot to support with. And, and many times it's called industrial policy. So it's where the government, instead of trying to take a fairly free market approach to economic policy design, will be a little bit more intentional about what they're trying to achieve. So if you are not producing any, let's say, manufactured goods, mm -hmm. you need to intervene in some way in order, as a government and as a society in order to foster that type of production and to protect it from international competition. And that goes against a lot of what more like mainstream, I guess, free market economists would argue for, but increasingly, I think, especially since the global financial crisis, developing countries are really in a place where they, they want to have more say over their development, and they actively want to mold and direct their economies to build this resiliency and to achieve better development outcomes. Brilliant. And what are your hopes for the future in relation to economic policy? Where how would you like to see the world be a better place in terms of resilience? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess for me, the big thing is I just like to see it be a bit more balanced. I mean, we call it, you know, um, free trade, but it's, in my view, it's a lot of just recreating colonial trading patterns. So we buy, expect, like, the raw materials and resources and agricultural products from poor countries, and we sell them our expensive, high value added products, and it just goes over and over again. And I would like to see a more balanced, um, more self-sufficiency within economies and a more equitable distribution in terms of production and power and money in the world. Yeah. I'd really like to thank you for joining us today for this um, very short uh, podcast or video log. Um, if you would like to hear more about urban resilience over the next few days, we'll be posting additional um, blogs on the Resilient Shift website. Thank you very much.